What's up guys, Chandler here from Podium One and behind me is our brand new six degree of freedom, full motion Robinson R44 simulator. Let's get into it. All right, so a couple really unique things about this simulator. One, we have a full force feedback, the Moza AB9 cyclic base. And what this allows is that all the sensitivity that you feel in a Robinson cyclic, you can one-to-one -one replicate. And then you can also make adjustments, right? So if you were actually flying an R22 and R66, it might have a little bit different feel. You can make those adjustments, whether it's the weight of it, the sensitivity, you know, any limitations you would want. Again, full replication here from this AB9 base. Up here, we have the R44 grip. This is 3D printed metal. So it's super sturdy, it feels real uh, because it is real, right? It's a real grip that's modeled after, uh, after the Robinson cyclic grips. We've got the collective, right? So we've got a throttle, you can see rolled on. You can see manifold pressure, not sitting in it, so we'll keep that off. We've got our anti-torque pedals. And then the beast here, which is fully designed in-house, is our Robinson panel. It's the first panel that we've built. And the main reason is that there's not a lot of products out on the market for heli sims that are outside of like a full simulator, like a level D simulator. And so again, our customer's Robinson, he's got the G500 with the heli convict, so you got your artificial horizon on the right. We've got our GTN 750, so full touch display. And it's got all the OEM Gar Garmin trainer software on there. So all the maps, the terrain data, all that stuff is updated. And you can see, again, full, full functionality of the GTN 750, which is super, super cool. And then we were able to replicate the steam gauges through Air Manager and custom screens that we had. So you've actually got these three vertical screens in here and lined up to uh, perfectly match our steam gauges, um, which is really, really cool. And the, the, the best part about this is, the customer of ours for this, this system that is going to, he also has a Cadbury G2 on order, and so he wanted the ability to do a center stick. So, very easily, I can unscrew this, come around and I can screw it on this mount right here. So let me do that and I can show you. And then I'll show you what we have, the solution for our center stick. So I'm going to, lock this in here and now this will just stay so he can go and fly you know the cabri I'm gonna grab this grip over here and if you guys know how you know this is a cabri g2 grip one-to-one -one, even the color we mounted another AB9 base down on this platform and check this out I'm gonna turn this one off now I'm gonna turn this one on it's easier when I'm sitting in the seat And now that this is on, you'll be able to actually see this thing moves by itself, right? Because it is full force feedback. So you've got motors inside of the stick that allow it to move, calibrate and adjust whatever you need to adjust. So right now it's going through its calibration. I'm just helping it because again, it's never gonna be at full extension on the panel. And so it actually hits. Uh, but right now, this is all you need in a heli and it's perfectly dialed in. Now granted, we're in the Robinson right now, but, and I'll show you this, when we load up the G2 flight model, I now have my digital G2, all my telemetry, my torque meter and everything on the G500. I have the GTN 750 and the steam gauges will automatically change to the steam gauges for the G2. So I'm gonna switch back to the Robinson. We're gonna get in the air and I'll kind of describe what we've worked on with the motion code and what we've worked on to make this thing feel as real as possible. All right, so I'm gonna climb in here and get belted up. Probably the coolest thing on any sim, and you probably heard me say this if you've watched some of our other videos, is the seatbelt tensioner. And what this does is it gives your body the cues that you need to replicate and feel the replication of G-force. So let's say I'm on a fixed wing and uh, I put my flaps down, you get a little more drag. I'm, I'm getting pulled directionally with these, uh, which is which is just super helpful, super immersive. All right, so we're sitting in the sim. You can obviously see that I'm getting a little bit of vibration, which is good because that's what happens in a Robin. You'll see it actually more as I roll the throttle on. You see my RPMs come to life, my manifold pressure, everything's looking good and in the green. And uh, I'm now gonna make sure my pedals are good, give them a little left pedal, and I'm gonna start lifting off. I'm flying here out of uh, KLIS in Vegas. Or we'll just go do a little pass over the strip. So, the coolest thing about this is I can look at my artificial horizon, I can look at the visuals, but I can feel everything, which is really you know hard to articulate on camera. 
you can see as I yaw the helicopter that I have that full motion and feel. Additionally, with this system, we've added a chat GPT-based AI air traffic control called Say Intentions. And so what's really cool about that is it automatically syncs with the, you know, knows what airport you're at, it knows that I'm an X-plane right in a Robinson. I can set my tail number. So if you have a specific tail number, obviously you own a helicopter, you can use your same tail number and go through all of your air traffic control and communications that you need to with the GTN 750, one-to-one -one as you would in real life, which is probably the coolest thing about flight simulators with the tech and software that's, uh, that's being developed right now. All right, so I'm gonna try to do a full down auto. Now, I am not a helicopter pilot. This system has been helicopter approved, uh, pilot approved that is, and what we mean by that is we've got probably over a dozen Robinson pilots, whether it's locally or people to fly in, Robinson test pilots, flight school owners, CFIs, that have flown in to help us develop these motion codes. Um, and so I myself have learned a lot about uh, flight through this process and, and what feels real, and obviously been up in helicopters, but all that to say, if I butcher this, uh, this auto, it's because I am not a pilot, but I will do my best. So I'm going to go full off. We're at 80 knots. I need to go nose up. Let's see if I can get yep, my rate of descent down a little bit. We're at 80 knots, 70 knots. If I can get it down to 60, nose up. And then, all right, let's introduce a little bit of collective here. I think I flared a little early. But, pretty good. Touchdown. A little rough. I don't know if that will pass in a, in a check flight, but um, at least you guys get to see that you can feel when the skids hit the ground. For instance, if I put my rear of the skids down and then the front, or if I put, say, let's put the left skid down first. I can feel all of those ground textures and the physics that are happening, which is super cool. So when it comes to the glass here, again, full functionality. You can run a standard G500 setup or the heli, which is going to have the artificial horizon on the right. So you can actually swap these. Um, and so pull my range out, let's go up again, full Garmin functionality. And if, if you guys wanted a configuration without glass, it's all steam gauge, like your, your kind of old, older Robinson panels, we can do that as well. Um, and actually design these things to, to fit the, uh, the avionics stack that you guys have. So uh, with the 5055's 5080 graphics card, will be 5090 once uh, at, at the current time, 5090s are limited. But all that to say, an X-Plane, we're running mid 40s to 50s FPS, which is super, super good for X-Plane, which is not really known for its graphic engine. And as you can see here, it actually looks quite amazing. I mean, you've got plenty of detail on the buildings, the vegetation, and then we'll look towards like even like the sunset. And what's really cool is let me grab my keyboard here and turn down. Colors are nice. And so what most people think in the flight sim world is that obviously how it feels is uh, is the most important, right? It needs to be real, it needs to be practical. But I don't think anyone can make the argument that you don't want it to look as good as possible. And I think at Podium One, that's something we do a really good job of, is, is full immersion. So you get them as practical and useful and realistic as possible, while also things like the G-Force tensioner and the sunsets, right? That when I'm flying, I'm fully immersed and my brain thinks that I'm, I'm doing the real thing, so. I'm gonna do a quick little landing here and we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next video.